Tate. It's your birthday today. Your father loves you. Hey, he works here at TV3, and if it's yours as well, happy birthday. But today is International Sickle Cell Day, or World Sickle Cell Day. Now, sickle cell disease is a group of blood disorders that affects hemoglobin, the molecule in uh, red blood cells that delivers oxygen to the cells throughout the body. It's typically inherited from parents. It's World Sickle Cell Day today, as I mentioned earlier, and Henry Kati Boy Okanse is a medical student at the Central University. He shares a story of how he has been living with sickle cell for 23 solid years. Take a look at this. It's uh, sometimes it's difficult, you know. Uh, you have to take your medications. You have to adhere to uh, some rules, some of those rules that are given to you, so that you you would um, you wouldn't get into crisis. So it's it's a little difficult, but uh, it's not too far from normal. Since I was a kid, I've been taking folic acid every morning because uh, because of the uh, this condition of the cells, it makes it difficult for the body to absorb folic acid. In, yeah, so we take it every morning, you know, to help um, increase all of that. And um, you are not to, you are not supposed to expose yourself too much to the to cold and then to wet um, wet environments, especially when it's rainy. So you need to cover up when it, when it rains. And in case you get wet when it rains, you need to, you know, dry up almost immediately. Too. And then you need to be hydrated a lot. So an average person is supposed to take um, like eight sachets or eight glasses of water a day. A sickle cell person has to take about uh, 12 a day. So that's a little, that's the difference. Because the cell can't hold as much water as that of a healthy person. My worst one was when I was in pre second year. I was in crisis for like three weeks straight, <laughs> uh, three weeks straight. So I don't know if anyone has had a, a dislocation. It's not like the pain, but the pain you feel immediately you get dislocated and it's like that continuous. You know, sometimes it goes down, sometimes it, it subsides. That's how it is. It, it's almost like hell. When I was a kid, I used to have, I used to feel a little underpowered and I used to feel a little left out because there were so many things I couldn't do. I, or I wasn't supposed to do, but you know, a kid is a kid, and I was a boy. So when I was a kid, I had, I, I was a little bit of an introvert. But now, since I got out of high school, I became a little okay. I mean, there's nothing I can do about it than to adhere to the rules and, you know, so, um, and then I believe that I can do everything. Like, I mean, I work out. I work out a lot. I, I go to the gym and all that. I don't let my, uh, condition hold me back because I don't put it mentally um, I don't make it a, a bedding so I don't feel too much left out now yeah, amongst my peers fortunately for me my mother is a nurse <laughs> and my, my my aunt owns a pharmacy shop she owns a pharmacy so fortunately for me my mom knows the drugs and the pills I'm supposed to take so she usually just goes there and gets it for me but um, the I think a lot of the hospitals, if not all of them, have some sort of sickle cell clinic that you can go and then they'll give you your painkillers and your uh, your supplements. Yeah, they, they give them. But uh, sometimes you can buy them like from a pharmacy shop because pharmacists are also educated in how to, you know, so they can, when you go there and you report like the condition, they can help yeah, to give you your drugs and your pills and then you take them. So that, that's how we get them usually, from the pharmacy or from the hospital. I believe I can do every, anything and everything. I intend to specialize in cardio. I want to be a cardiologist and then a surgeon. Like a, so that's, those are my inspirations. But then sometimes too, I, I'd, I want to help, I want to, you know, do a little bit of genetics to help and mitigate the the pain and all that that um, sickle cell patients go, especially the kids, because it's very difficult. And I know I can. I mean, sickle cell is not holding me back. When I when I was a kid, I used to have the fear of dying early, because that's what we were told. Sickle cell patients don't live, I think, 18. But 
And then because of that, my mom used to hold me back, you know, the only boy. So she used to hold me back from saying things, but I stopped preventing myself. I went, I went all out in everything I did. And I believe I can do everything. So I'm sure I can achieve my dreams of becoming a, a cardio surgeon, probably in the next 10 years. The chilling story of Henry out there. I've been joined in the studio by Mary Kiampoma. She is a clinical psychologist with the Ghana Institute of Clinical Genetics at Kolibu. She's also the vice president of the Sickle Cell Association of Ghana, the Kolibu chapter. Mary, welcome. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, Thank you too. Today is not a day to celebrate, if you ask me, but how many Henrys are out there? Okay. Um, there are a lot of Henrys um, in Ghana. Henry is an adult, so I'm going to make reference to him. Okay. I work with the Adult Sickle Cell Clinic, mm -hmm. and we have um, um, like 26,000 patients living wow. with um, sickle, cell, sickle cell, both children and adults mm -hmm. at the Kolibu alone. Mm -hmm. So there are lots. Um, for babies, um, we have like 15,000 babies born mm -hmm. every year with mm -hmm. sickle cell, and we have like 2% of all newborns with sickle cell. So the burden is huge okay. when it comes to mm. sickle cell, which is a non-communicable disease. Right. Yes. So um, when we talk about sickle cell, we are passionate because mm. there are a lot of people living with sickle cell okay. who go undiagnosed. Okay. Can they are not aware that they, are, they have sickle, they have the condition. Yes, because education is not much, mm. right? Education, we, um, education is not much. Mm. We are not doing more for, the, for people to know much about sickle cell. Mm. So people might have pain crisis. Okay. People might have, people might develop other complications mm. related mm. to sickle cell, mm. but they, might, they may not know mm. that they have sickle cell. Another thing that can also prevent uh, people from knowing is stigma. Okay. We stigmatize a lot, mm. and uh, when you when you stigmatize, you are devaluing the person. Mm. You are de discrediting the person. The, so the person feels like it's better that people don't know that I have sickle cell. So I have patients who grandmothers prevented. They knew they had sickle cell, okay. but they prevented them from coming to the, because of society the clinic. Stigma. Right, and they were giving them painkillers, but the issue how is how dangerous is that? Yes, the issue is um, how they dangerous are not, is that? Yeah, they, they just not uh, uh, you know taking painkillers on your own and not coming for medical attention. How dangerous is that? It's very dangerous because um, you might not know what is what is causing it because usually they have to look at the root cause mm. of it. Right, mm. aside that, sickle cell is not just a pain. The symptoms, it's not just um, pain. Let's, let's start it's from the top. It's, it's not just pain. What is it? How do people get sickle cell, the condition? Um, Tell me about it. I am not a physician. Okay. And because of my training, mm. I would prefer to stay in okay. the psychosocial aspect of right. living with sickle cell. Okay, but you Henry, can give us a brief background. Yes, Henry, Henry made mention of a lot of... Um, psychosocial issues mm. that I want to take it up from there. Okay. We know that no, but we, we need cell, to set the tone with right. a few We know that issues. sickle cell mm. is a blood related condition. Okay. And the fact that um, sickle cell is genetic, it is transmitted mm. from parents to children. So one parent has an abnormal hemoglobin, mm. which can be S, C, D, E. Okay and another parent has the same, mm. but they, they don't know that they are carriers. Okay. They, they don't have sickle cell, but okay. they are just a carrier of one abnormal hemoglobin. So, so when they come together... It, so when they cold, come together, okay. because the child is or will take one hemoglobin from each parent. Mm -hmm. So if the child takes the S from the mother, takes the S from the dad, mm. the child has sickle cell because the child has two abnormal hemoglobins, at least one of them being S. If, if, if the child take S from mom, mm. C from daddy, mm. it's still SC, which is also um, a type of sickle wow. cell condition. Is it preventable, for example, uh, these days before people get married, they ask to go for blood tests. Is it, is it preventable where two people who fall in love but they are told that medically, if you have children, they will have this predicament. So 
don't get married. Is, are there instances like that? Yes, but, um, y you know, um, people have to f make their informed choices. Right. Nobody can say, don't get married. But you give them the information. Okay. Give them the information. Right. Let them know the consequences. Mm. So even when they go into it, they know okay. that this is what we are expecting. Right. If they don't want it and they want to go their separate ways, mm. that's fine. But nobody has the mandate to say that you have S, you have mm. this, so don't so get don't married. Mm. But just give them the information okay. and let them the decide. Two, okay. Make their own informed decision mm. whether mm. to get married or not. Henry talked about the fact that when he was young, he felt underwhelmed. Uh, he didn't feel good about himself. He always had to keep himself in a certain uh, background so that, you know, he's not out there in the face of people. Is that a normal scenario within our space and our society? Right. Um, when it comes to sickle cell condition, mm. it is a chronic condition. Okay. And that, and because we don't have much education, people mm. are not aware of it that much, people tend to stigmatize. So there are certain myths surrounding mm. sickle cell, mm. like they die early. Okay. So sickle cell is like a childhood disease, mm. but now we know better that uh, they live longer. Okay. We have patients who are in their 90s, mm. 80s, 70s, so they live but longer. But some die but they, young too. Just like any other condition, mm. you can have malaria and die early, okay. right? You can have diabetes and mm. die early, mm. right? Mm. So just like any other condition, if it's not diagnosed, okay. if they are not specialists mm. to, to, I mean, take care of them mm. and they get acute conditions, okay. they might die early. Right. So um, I don't want sickle cell being tagged that uh, people living with sickle cell mm. die early. Mm. No, it's just like any other condition. Okay. And because of the stigma that they die early, the mm. myth there that mm. they die early, mm. um, they, are, they are not healthy, mm. as cho as a child, you mm. might grow up knowing okay. that, oh, I have sickle cell, and this is the myth. Okay. So uh, a lot of them go through depression, mm. anxiety, and that is where we come in. They go through uh, withdrawal, hostility, mm. because of the fact that they have sickle cell, which they didn't do anything. Okay. Henry, Henry talks about the fact that when he was at uh, Presec, he had three weeks straight of, you know, some right. episodes, and it was, it was really painful for him. Um, but then he was able to surmount that and he feels very confident these days. Mm. When people fall into that kind of situation, what should they do? Right. Um, you know, I, I always tell people anywhere I go that when it comes to living with a chronic condition, it's, just, it's not just the physical or the medical aspect of it that okay. the person get pains the mm. person get um com other complications related to sickle cell mm. but then the psychosocial aspect of it right is mm. very huge the mm. psychosocial aspect of it of it can affect your your stress level mm. because he was in school then Probably he was overstressing himself, mm. learning, mm. and all, doing mm. all, not taking breaks, okay. wanting to make it, and all that. And that can cause stress. And when stress comes mm. in, it lowers your immune system. Ah, okay. And um, there's a high probability that mm. pain crisis is as a result of infections too. So if okay. your immune system is low, um, infection can take over, wow. and you might get um, pain. Mm. Or because you are busily studying, you might not be taking your mm. water, mm. you might not be um, eating well, mm. and that mm. can all lead to... We'll, we'll talk crisis. about your lecture shortly, but what advice would you give to parents who have children uh, who have sickle cell, or they themselves have sickle cell, and, and they go about worrying and, and thinking that all is lost, there's, mm. there's no light at the end of the tunnel. What advice would you give them? Yeah. Um, I just want to let them know that um, any sickle cell patient can live a normal life. They can live a very normal life when they are diagnosed early, okay? Mm. When they are diagnosed early, when they are, um, when they are treated or managed well. Mm. We have people who are in their 90s, 80s, mm. who, who were nurses and all that. Oh. So there is, there is hope. There's hope. There's hope. We have, um, we have new drugs coming in. Mm hydroxy, which um, helps to prevent frequent crisis. Mm. Um, we have new um, 
we we have clinics. Mm. We have specialists who who um, take care of sickle so cell patients. So there are resources available. It's to just help that it. it's not enough. Okay. It's not enough. Mm. Like, for instance, if you want to talk about newborn screening, mm. uh, we don't have a national newborn screening policy. In Ghana. And that is what, yes. Mm. I mean, um, for non communicable diseases, there that people should be screened, mm. right? Mm. But then we haven't implemented it. Especially so, for newborns. Yes. So when somebody is born, the screening is not done. So the detection is done later. Right. Wow. So now uh, we have. Um, Sickle Cell Foundation partnering mm. with Novartis to, mm. to I mean, start a newborn screening. Okay. I think they did it last year. Mm. It's still running. But the issue is, would it be continued okay. after the funds are done with? Good question. Would it be national, national. not mm. just Kolebu, Bakumase, Tamale, mm. everywhere? All good, the good, regions. Good question. Finally, uh, let's talk quickly about the symptoms, maybe three or four symptoms that uh, parents should look out for or individuals should look out for. Um, as I said, but I think you that, work at the at the sickle yes, cell. Yes, the main um, people come in a lot with pain crisis. Okay. So that is that is the hallmark of all the symptoms. Okay. That's pain crisis. Then the second thing is um, some of them also experience um, strokes. Strokes. Mm. Especially when they are young. Mm. I mean, it's not everybody that okay. gets stroke, okay. but a child can have stroke. Right. An adult, it can be overt mm. or silent. Right. Um, some too have um, sores on their legs. Mm. Okay. Mm. Um, some too um, get what we call prepism, okay. where um, you are not you are not in the mood to have sex, but <sighs> then your penis is erect and uh, it's very painful. Prepism. Yes. Okay, great. So, um, let, let, let's talk about your, uh, finally, your, uh, what do you call it, the lecture that's coming up today on sickle cell. Okay. Give us the dates, the venue, and the theme, the speakers. Okay, quickly. so um, today we are having a lecture at the Ghana College for Physicians and Surgeons right. in Accra okay. at Ridge. Mm. And um, it's part of the awareness. Okay, what time are we starting? We are we, we are starting at 3.30 p.m. And the theme is blood is thicker than water. Blood is thicker than water. Interesting theme. Who's speaking yes. at the lecture? Uh, Professor Solomon Ufuria Kwa. Right. Blood is thicker than water because um, we know from mm. history, from studies that um, sickle cell started mm. in Africa. Mm. Okay. So um, it started in Africa, mm. but left the shores of Africa to all the right. various regions. We, we will get all the details at 3 p.m. Thank you very much, right. Mary. Mary wants to start a lecture here. <laughs> Mary Ekuyampoma is a clinical psychologist with the Ghana Institute of Clinical Genetics at Kolebu. She's also the vice president of the Sickle Cell Association of Ghana, Kolebu chapter. Uh, thank you very much. So